Hello friends, this video on basic concepts of chemistry part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 10. Let's take a brief history of atomic mass because it is, it is interesting here. So you see the first guy uh, to determine the atomic mass was John Dalton and it was called atomic weight that time. That guy used to call atomic weight that time. And after this, for a couple of years, the whole scientific uh, chemist community was uh, busy in finding atomic mass of various elements that were discovered because you must have observed or seen the periodic table chapter in the class 10 where we told that uh, the elements, a lot of elements were discovered in this era, right? So if you don't remember, you can watch the class 10 periodic table chapter. You will understand how the chemistry involved. That time hydrogen was, uh, uh, this guy found the atomic weight, that time this guy used to call it atomic weight. It was in 1803, that first time this, uh, the chemist world has found the atomic mass of a particular element. And that time this atomic weight, atomic mass was defined related to the light, lightest element that's called hydrogen. And they took one as the atomic weight or mass that time, same thing for hydrogen. And they used to find relative to hydrogen, oxygen, some number relative to hydrogen, that way they used to do it. Hydrogen doesn't react with a lot of things, right? And see, you see in this case, this whole thing was based on stoichiometry, right? That is chemical reaction. Through chemical reaction, they found. And they found that oxygen is more reactive. You can burn anything, right? And it is ample available. So instead of hydrogen as base, now they took oxygen as the base, correct? Because hydrogen is, you can react a lot of things with hydrogen, but oxygen is, more, uh, you can react easily, you can have more reactions with the oxygens. So they took oxygen as the base instead of hydrogen. And the atomic mass of oxygen was taken to be 16 as the base because it's a whole number now. Please note, they are looking at the whole numbers, right? So and also something which reacts because this time, till this time, this uh, mass spectrometry was not there. Till, nine, till this time it is not there. And both started using oxygen because oxygen was pretty reactive and chemists can use this for reaction and physics also adopted it because physics didn't have issues. But then they found that the natural oxygen which they use, they have other isotopes of oxygen also. Oxygen 16 was not the only isotope. They had, I think oxygen 17 or something, right? So they had oxygen 17 and oxygen 18 also, correct? Thus, the atomic mass of oxygen which they use for reaction is not 16, it is something else. That is 16.008. I'll tell you how to find the uh, atomic mass of uh, element which has more isotopes. But let's assume that this came out to be 16.008. Well, I'll explain why how this came out to be 16.008. But they found that uh, this is 16.008. But still chemist people use oxygen. Why? Because they still need something that is reactive, right? To find atomic mass because the whole uh, concept or the, the the basic principle of finding the atomic was was the stoichiometry that is chemical reaction and oxygen was chemically reactive. So chemist people started uh, took this again oxygen as the mass but they changed their reference because now their reference is oxygen which has atomic mass of 16.008 right which is not a whole number you see but physics people told that we don't want this we'll take carbon why why carbon because based on the mass spectrometry because now this mass spectrometry concept has come i think it is uh, 1900 eras right this is something 1930 40 i don't remember so this time uh, the mass spectrometry has come and they found that using the tool that carbon 12 has a whole number that is 12 as the atomic mass so this guy found that carbon has a 12 atomic mass using mass spectrometry which is a better way to find atomic mass actually so they, they were looking for something as a whole number. Why? Because I'll tell you, if they take this guy and they have to multiply with some number, right? So they have to do huge calculation. They want to deal into this. So they wanted a simpler thing, right? Which is this carbon in this case, 12. If you multiply this guy with 5, also it is 60, very simple. But if you multiply this guy with 5, it's a huge calculation, right? Or let's suppose you have to multiply with 5, 9, 5, 8, 98. Pretty huge calculation. So physics world started using carbon 12 because using mass spectrometry because for them uh, they, they they wanted something the whole number right they found carbon carbon was uh, abundantly available and using mass spectrometry they, they found that this is a whole number right exactly 12 came out 
by surprise they found that for this guy it exactly 12 came out for oxygen this came out not exact whole number so that was the one reason why carbon was taken where for carbon when they did the mass spectrometry and they found the mass came out exactly as a whole number that is 12 so there's a conflict between physics and chemists now chemist people are still using oxygen uh, with various isotopes or you can say the natural oxygen with the atomic mass of 16.008 and physicists started using carbon as the base right then they made in 19 uh, so, so there were two different tables for atomic mass because everything was relative till this point of time right relative to carbon and relative to oxygen so there was a conflict and this 1961 not very old almost uh, 50 years 60 years back these guys met the chemist and the physicist all this met and they had a standard agreement and they told okay let's use carbon 12. why because carbon was the only one which has a whole number as the atomic mass unit using mass spectrometer they have found this other things were coming down to be let's suppose uh, maybe 16.007 uh, or something for oxygen but, but for carbon it came out to be exactly 12 for c12 isotopes and that's was a big thing right when carbon is uh, evidently uh, available and also they have this got the exact whole number which they are looking for and thus this became the base for atomic mass in the chemist and physicist world Thus, if you see in this system, my 12C is assigned the mass of exactly 12 atomic mass unit and that became the standard for atomic mass unit, correct? Let's understand average atomic mass. So many uh, elements, if you see, they exist in more than one isotope, for example, carbon, oxygen, they exist in more than one isotope. So when we take into existence of isotopes and their relative abundance, then we have to find atomic mass average also. For example, I told in the oxygen, this guy first took oxygen 16 and they took this guy as base and then they found that oxygen also has oxygen 17 and oxygen 18, which is related to less, but it has, right? So then they found the average atomic mass. Why? Because if you take oxygen as 16 atomic mass and then you do a combustion, then you'll get wrong answer because the average atomic mass of oxygen is not 16, but you take have to take the average of these based on their abundance because when you talk about air, air will have all these three and that's why the concept of average atomic mass came. For example, carbon has three isotopes, 98.892 is carbon 12 isotope Then they have 13 and 14 isotope also but their abundance is very less actually right and they have different atomic mass. So if we want to find the average atomic mass of this, this guy will become this guy that is 98.892 percentage. So divide by 100 into 12 this guy plus this percent that is 1.108 divide by 100 into this guy plus this percentage that is 2 into 10 to the power minus 10 divide by 100 into this guy. So this guy will give you the average atomic mass and this guy is used because you take any carbon right so you take any carbon in that case the atomic mass of that carbon will be the relative atomic mass of carbon that is this guy right it won't be the c12 atomic mass because in that carbon you may find this and this guy also similarly in the last problem we had where oxygen was taken base right they found that oxygen also has 17 and 18 and they found that the relative uh, atomic mass for this guy was not 16 but 16.008 i think right some, some value came 16.08 so that's how it is so when you have a particular element in different isotopes and you know the relative abundance of that and then you find the relative atomic mass it is not that you have to find this mean of this but you have to find this into this this into this this into this you add and that's how you find relative atomic mass because it is based on the relative abundance also correct with this it is clear that you take a carbon you know that the carbon atomic mass will not be 12 it will be this value which you get in this answer similarly for oxygen it won't be 16 but it will be the mean of it not mean but this into the percentage this into percentage of existence this into percentage of existence you add you get the value correct let's take some example you need to find the uh, average atomic mass for chlorine let's do that so if you see chlorine has two isotope 35 and 37 this guy is 75.7 percent this guy is 24.2 let's find the relative atomic mass so relative atomic mass for cl is nothing but this percentage that is 75. 77 percent is so divide by 100 into this guy 
34.9689 plus this guy 24.23 by 100 into this guy 36.965 correct and this guy comes out to be 26.4959 plus 8.9568 and that is what 35.4527 and that is my answer. Hope you understand this. Pretty straightforward. We'll take one more question here. So here we have to find the relative atomic uh, mass for argon. The existence given. So this again will be uh, abundance is 0.337. So it will be 0 0.337 by 100 into uh, molecular mass that is 35.96755 plus abundance of this that is 0 0.063 divided by 100 into this guy that is 37.96272 plus this guy 99.6 by 100 into this guy 39.962 so if you solve this you get 39.947 as well that's how you find relative atomic mass and we know why it is used because example for oxygen also when you burn with oxygen any any element and you want to use stoichiometry to find atomic masses uh, you get better answers, better calculation if we use the relative atomic mass of oxygen because oxygen is in, in, in an oxygen find that 99% you get O60 but again some other percent of O17 and O18 also. So better you know that your mixture has all these O16, O17, O18 in different percentage so it's better to find a, a relative uh, or average atomic mass. So average atomic mass is fine in this way. Percentage of abundance into this uh, molecular mass plus percentage of abundance into molecular mass plus percentage of abundance into molecular mass. So sum of add these you get relative atomic. Then we have something called molecular mass. Till now we have done atomic mass. This is a, something called molecular mass. It is the sum of atomic mass for all the elements present in a molecule. For example, you have that suppose methane CH4, right? This guy has carbon and hydrogen. So one carbon is 12.001 units. One hydrogen is 1.008 units. Generally for calculation we just take it 1 and this guy will generally indicate 12 but since we are talking about molecular mass so I am giving you precise values. So if you add this it becomes 16.043 units. This is the molecular mass of carbon. So this is nothing but you sum up all the atomic mass of all the atoms in the element that becomes a molecular mass. So you have to calculate the molecular mass of following water, CO2 and CH. So if you see molecular mass of water is how much water has H2O that is two hydrogen molecules plus one oxygen molecules. Hydrogen I'll take one and oxygen I'll take 16. This becomes 18 atomic mass units. This becomes my molecular mass of water. I'll take carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has one carbon plus two oxygen. This becomes one into carbon is how much? Six, 12. Carbon is 12, C12. And oxygen, two oxygen, that is two into one oxygen is sixteen. So this becomes you add this becomes forty-four atomic mass. So when you talk about methane CH four, so carbon is one, one carbon plus four hydrogen. So one carbon is one into twelve. Four hydrogen I'll take one this time because that's simpler. So this becomes sixteen atomic mass. These are my atomic mass unit for water, carbon dioxide, and very simple. Just you have to find the atomic mass units of all the atoms and then add them. This guy had four hydrogen, so four into hydrogen. This guy has two oxygen, two into oxygen, then two into sixteen. This guy has two hydrogen, two into hydrogen. Correct. Let's take the form formula mass. So sometimes we have formula. We don't have discrete molecules. For example, sodium chloride to act as Na plus and Cl minus ion. Right? This is a. Um, this is not a. We can say. They are different. The moment you put in some solvent, this becomes Na plus and Cl minus ion, but they do exist together, right? So we, we generally call this as formula mass because they don't contain district molecules actually. So in this, you see the sodium and chlorine molecules are separate and they are in different layers. So when you see uh, sodium chloride, so here also you just add the uh, molecular uh, atomic mass of these two, that becomes a formula mass, correct? For example, in this case for sodium chloride, sodium has 23 and chlorine has 35.5 you add these you get 58.5 u that is 58.5 units it is 58.5 atomic mass unit is the uh, formula mass for sodium thank you